During a training session, most people tend to rest passively between sets, meaning they pretty much do nothing. Also, for the most part, it's quite common to rest from anywhere between 1 to 5 minutes between sets. In a workout comprising of 3 sets of 7 different exercises, assuming it takes around 30 seconds to perform each set, resting 2 minutes between sets and exercises would mean that the session lasts around 50 minutes and 30 seconds. However, 40 of those minutes would be spent resting. That's quite a bit of time spent doing nothing. Is there anything we could do during those rest intervals to enhance muscle growth? Well, a fairly recent paper by Schoenfeld and colleagues aimed to find out if holding isometric contractions between sets could enhance muscle hypertrophy. 27 men with at least one year of training experience were allocated to either a passive rest group or an isometric group. Both groups trained three times per week for eight weeks. The same six exercises, the barbell bench press, barbell overhead press, wide grip lat pull down, seated cable row, barbell back squat, and leg press were performed for both groups. Three sets to failure with an eight to 12 rep max load were performed for each exercise. The passive rest group rested two minutes between sets. The isometric group also rested two minutes between the sets. However, during the first 30 seconds of this two minutes, an isometric contraction was performed. During the rest intervals between the barbell bench press and the barbell overhead press, the isometric group performed an isometric contraction for the triceps. Subjects held their arms by their side and aimed to extend their elbows as far as comfortable while squeezing the triceps maximally. During the rest intervals between the wide grip lap pull down and cable row, the isometric group performed an isometric contraction for the elbow flexors. The elbow flexors, by the way, comprised the biceps brachii, brachialis, and brachioradialis. Subjects held their arms by their side and aimed to flex their elbows as far as comfortable while squeezing their elbow flexors maximally. During the rest intervals between the barbell back squat and leg press, the isometric group performed an isometric contraction for the quadriceps. Subjects were seated and aimed to extend their knee as far as comfortable while squeezing the quadriceps maximally. Thickness of the elbow flexors, which included the biceps brachii and brachialis, triceps brachii, mid thigh, which was a composite of the rectus femoris and vastus intermedius, and lateral thigh, which was a composite of the vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius again, was measured before and after for both groups. Confidence intervals were used to represent the results, with the values on the y-axis equaling the gains experienced by the isometric group minus the gains experienced by the passive rest group. For the elbow flexors, triceps brachii and lateral thigh, growth was similar between the two groups. However, for the mid thigh, growth slightly favoured the isometric group. Interestingly, there was an individual in the passive rest group who experienced substantial growth of this muscle, while there was another individual in the isometric group who experienced little growth of this muscle. Removing their data shifted this confidence interval, such that all the values of the interval supported the idea that the isometric group experienced greater growth of the mid-thigh compared to the passive rest group. So, the results of this study suggest that holding isometric contractions between sets does not enhance hypertrophy of the elbow flexors, triceps or lateral thigh, but it could potentially enhance mid-thigh growth. These are intriguing findings. Could anything explain why the mid-thigh benefited from isometric contractions? Well, exercise selection can likely explain this. Both the passive rest group and isometric group were training the barbell back squat and leg press. The rectus femoris, which is part of the mid-thigh, is poorly trained with these movements. Indeed, research by Kubo and colleagues demonstrated that back squats at 140 degrees of knee flexion and back squats at 90 degrees of knee flexion failed to grow the rectus femoris. Leg extensions, on the other hand, have been documented to be quite good at growing the rectus femoris. Given the isometric group were essentially performing an isometric leg extension between their sets of the back squat and leg press, this likely increased tension on the rectus femoris, resulting in greater mid-thigh growth. I think two equally valid interpretations can be taken away from this study. Given their elbow flexors, triceps and lateral thigh were all stimulated to a fairly good degree with the exercises used by both groups and experienced no additional benefit to performing isometric contractions between sets, it could be speculated that if both groups were performing a leg extension, 
the use of the isometric leg extension between sets would likely not be beneficial too. However, for those pressed with time and cannot or do not wish to perform leg extensions, as we've seen from the study, the use of an isometric leg extension between sets of squats or leg presses can effectively be used to grow the mid-thigh.